What's going on, you guys? So there's a narrative that's been going on through the boxing community for probably for about five or six years now. And the negative, the, the narrative is that a lot of the PBC fighters be hiding behind Al Heyman, be ducking smoke, and and when you look at it, when when, when a fan hear that, they tend to put all these fighters from Premier Boxing Champions under this umbrella. But if you be real with yourself and you follow boxing, you know that there's not every fighter over there on Premier Boxing Champions is ducking smoke or being cowards. Hit that like button for your boy. We on Bushido Boxing TV. This is where we're going to be. But cool boy Steph, Stephen Fulton Jr., is moving like a real warrior. And he's one of the many warriors that's over there on the Premier Boxing Champions stable. But he's moving like a true champion. He's talking like a true champion. He hears and sees the criticism that he received from his fight with Brandon Figueroa. A lot of people say he may have gotten a gift decision. This is why he was fighting Figueroa again to shut up the naysayers. He's also taking up the challenge of facing the monster, Niola Inouye. Check out what he had to say. Brandon Figueroa back in November before the NOA fight. I was only going to do that because, you know, to silence the critics. Everybody was talking and, oh, it was a close fight and this person won, this person won, this one lost. So I wanted to silence the critics. But after I heard that NOA was moving up, I made the call to Lou to Cuba. And we all got Al on the phone that we made it happen. He Al gave me the blessing. And, I, and that's something I wanted to do. And I feel like that's how my whole career went. Anything I wanted to do, I'll let Al allow me to do that. As well as me wanting it for myself. A salute to Brian Custer on the Last Stand podcast. Brian Custer, like I said before, he does some of the best interviews. He asks some of the best questions. And Stephen Fulton, cool boy Steph, was on there. You heard what he had to say. And this is what us fight fans, this is what we want to hear from fighters. This behavior, this is what the type of behavior we would like to see from fighters. This is the character we like to see displayed from fighters. He was only fighting Figueroa because people said he, he they thought he lost the fight. And then when he was actually going through with the fight, fans said, oh, why he's fighting Figueroa? He's scared of this guy. He's scared of that guy. What is he doing? He said, all right, let me go ahead and fight Niall anyway. Since so y'all say I don't want to fight him either. Let me go and fight him then. And I'll go over there in Japan and do it. That's a warrior right there. That's a real fighter. And guess what? He's under the PBC stable. And you heard what he said about Al Heyman. He said Al Heyman gave him the blessing to go to Japan and put it on the line against the smaller man. To go to Japan and put it on the line against the smaller man. Some of the best leverage that they have in the smaller weight classes is cool boy Steph, Stephen Fulton Jr. Guess what? He's going to put it on the line against the monster now anyway. So it leads me to believe who's really holding up these fights. If Al Heyman giving guys champions like cool boy Steph the blessing to go off and do other things on other networks, other promotional companies. But he won't give guys like Errol Spence or Javante Tank Davis the same type of blessings. Is it is it really Al Heyman or is it is it these fighters that like to use Al Heyman as a as a way to block certain fights? I, I, what What is going on, people? Because it seemed like the Bronze Bomber got to do whatever he wanted, too. The Bronze Bomber was able to go off and fight Tyson Fury. Three times. Three times. So, is it really Al Heyman that's stopping these fights? Is it fair to say PBC fighters don't want to be want no smoke and PBC fighters be hiding behind Al Heyman? Is it fair to say that all PBC fighters do this? Because if you pay attention, it's not all the PBC fighters. Why would he grant Cool Boy Steph? To go all the way over there to Japan. We know how they get down over there. We know what could possibly happen over there. And yet and still, he let Cool Boy Steph go. Is it because he believes in Cool Boy Steph? Or don't believe in guys like Spence? Or is it really because Spence really don't want to fight with Terrence Bud Crawford? He put another fight in front of him. Keith one time Thurman. Instead of going through with the fight with Terrence Bud Crawford. I think, like I told you guys, and I've been saying this for years, if Errol Spence really wanted to fight, it would have been happened. When two fighters want to fight, <laughs> the fight will happen. Point blank period. When two fighters really want something, it tends to happen. Then we look at the Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis situation. It's starting to look like one side really don't want it like that. I mean, Tank Davis has been quiet for the past few days now. 
Ryan Garcia said, stop hiding behind Al Heyman. These guys hide behind Al Heyman. But is it really Al Heyman blocking these fights? Because when you hear stuff like that from Cool Boy, it really makes you think. Schoolboy said, look, man, I'm a fighter, bro. This is what I do. I'm a man. I'm grab my nuts, and I'm about to put it on the line. Because that's what champions do. That's what real fighters do. These guys ain't going to be making half as much money as Crawford and, Sp um, Crawford and Spence is going to be making. And yet and still, they're about to go out there and put it on the line. So I'm looking at guys like Errol Spence, like, what, what what's really the good, bro? Yeah. I told y'all we go keep that pressure on. Yeah. This is a perfect example. Cool Boy Steph was an Al Heyman fighter. Al Heyman gave him the blessing to go all the way to Japan to fight the monster. And it's just a testament to the shows how much of a warrior Cool Boy really is. Because the little man coming up challenging him, guess what he ain't do? He ain't running away. He said, no, I'm standing right here and I'm going to show you what's real. But when it comes to Terrence Bud Crawford, the other pound for pound top guy in the sport of boxing, who's been pound for pound since Mayweather Pacquiao was around, he can't then get that same easy path, easy access to the fight like the monsters getting from Cool Boy. Terrence Crawford had to go get a belt. He was on the wrong side of the street. He ain't fought nobody. He got to do this. He got to do that. He got to leave his promoter. He got to everything. He got to take the B side, 35%, 60%, 40%, 30%. Did Cool Boy say any of that to the monster, Naomi Inouye? <laughs> nah, he didn't. So it's not all PBC fighters, folks. We can't generalize and say they're all our PBC fighters. Nah, because you can't say that about the Browns bomber. Because he put it all on the line against Tyson Fury. All of it. Everything he put it on the line against Tyson Fury. Everything. Sean Porter. One of the bravest warriors in the sport of boxing. PBC fighter. He went over there to the top rank to fight Terrence Crawford. What was Errol Spence at? <laughs> Nowhere to be found. And Cool Boy Steph was having a fight with Figueroa coming up, right? Errol Spence got a fight with Keith Thurman coming up. And like I said before, what's stopping Spence from fighting Thur um, Crawford now? What's stopping Spence from fighting Crawford now? Cool Boy said, nah, scratch that Figueroa fight. Uh-uh. I won't fight the monster. That's a better fight. That's a tougher fight. That's a more interesting fight. I want to see if the little man can come up and beat the big man. Let's go. Come on, little dude. Come on up here. See, Crawford didn't get that. Oh, no, nah, he this. He light in the ass. He does. All this wolfing and hollering. Jamel Charlo, same thing. Little dude challenging you. Calling you a punk. All types of stuff. What you do? Nothing, bro. But cool boy stuff. Nah, he ain't cut off like that. Maybe it's a Philly thing. Maybe, 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 maybe the Midwest and the East Coast, they, they, maybe they just built different in those areas, right? In those regions. The Midwest dudes and the East Coast dudes, we about that action. Maybe that's what it is, right? Ain't too much talking. When it's time to fight, it's time to fight. I don't know. Look, the Browns bomber from the South. He's different. Maybe it's not even a regional thing. Maybe it's the fact that Terrence Crawford is just a bad dude. But then you got guys like Averigian, the Mean Machine, the Sean Porters, the Kell Brooks, the Miracons. You know, those guys are brave enough to get in the ring with Terrence Bud Crawford. But when we're looking at Errol Spence, now nah, he ain't going to drop his fight with Thurman to go fight Crawford. Why? Because he don't really plan on fighting Terrence Crawford. He's not even coming back down to 147 to fight Terrence Crawford for undisputed. He's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. But fighters like Cool Boy Steph, Stephen Fulton Jr., yeah, that's a fighter's fighter right there, man. You got to respect it. Got to respect it. Because he ain't running away from the little guy, the monster. He ain't running away from the monster. Now he's going to the monster's territory. He asked Al Heyman. Al Heyman said, yeah. You get my blessing. Go do your thing. So how come Errol Spence can't ask Al Heyman, hey, man, make this Terrence Crawford fight by any means necessary? Like, subscribe, hide your boy. Peace out.